Hi everyone, my name is Brooke Gordon and I am the coordinator of international education here at CSU. Um, we are located in a Center for Global Engagement. Today we're going to focus on education abroad opportunities you can take partake in as a CSU student. So welcome to Cougars Abroad. Education abroad and your degree. We do want to take some time here to kind of um, debunk some myths you may have about education abroad and let you know that there are opportunities for you that you can partake in um, even as early as your freshman year. So yes, you can earn CSU credit while studying abroad. Our four classes, everyone has to take that coming into CSU, um, whether you're entering freshman or you're transferring in, typically there's a few classes you still have left to take. And um, we do offer study abroad programming for core classes and typically our freshmen and sophomores can participate in those. Our core classes that are offered through study abroad, the first ones that begin are during our spring semester, so offered during spring break. And we will talk more about that as we continue to move forward. You guys are also able to participate in education abroad while taking your upper level courses and your major or elective credits. So you don't have to study abroad only as a freshman or only as a sophomore. Um, the opportunity is available for students regardless of your um, classification. So freshmen to seniors, it's available for you all. And then we have no language proficiency required. Many people and students believe that in order to study abroad, you have to know um, a second, third, or a foreign language, and that's not the case with the programs we offer here at CSU. All of the classes and programs you take are offered in English. Um, however, if you would like the challenge of learning a second, third, or foreign language, the opportunity definitely presents itself through our intensive language learning programs. Um, these are mostly offered during the summer, but you're also able to take on a foreign language um, if you decide to participate in a semester or academic year program abroad. So our intensive language learning programs offered during the summer, um, oftentimes we'll find our students going abroad to um, Spain as well as Mexico, and we're continuing to expand. So look forward to that. I do want to break down the program types that we offer and what you all can look forward to. So we have short term or what is called faculty led programs where our students are able to study abroad with a CSU professor as well as CSU classmates. So classmates don't meet in a classroom before they go abroad and will make lifelong friendships with. Our first faculty led programs of the academic year do begin um, in during spring break. So it's embedded into the CSU spring semester. You're taking your class here at CSU starting in January and during spring break, you have that excursion portion where you are abroad in your host country with your professor and other classmates and you return and finish out the class. And then we have our May semester programs that is embedded, of course, into the May semester schedule um, offered throughout the month of May. And these programs typically last anywhere from two to four weeks. So this is um, an amazing time, a great time to maybe fulfill one or two classes during a semester through a study abroad program. It is a fantastic way to kick off your summer. And then, of course, we have our summer programs where a majority of our programs run. And these can vary in length anywhere from two to four weeks and typically begin in June with some beginning in July. So you have a range of program types and lengths you guys can choose from when looking at our faculty led programs. Some of our signature experiences, I just want to highlight some of these have been around for 20 plus years. Other programs we are just getting started on um, and we'll definitely have them before you guys throughout your time here at CSU. We have our CSU and Oxford programs. We do have an entire slide dedicated to this that we'll focus more on. Um, and then we have our CSU in Strasbourg. So it's our SEPA um, Learning Center with the ESC in Strasbourg, France. Our students are able to participate in this program either during the fall or spring semester, and they have a summer leadership program available as well. 
and our exchange programs where our students can study abroad um, in anywhere from England all the way over to Japan. So we have a range of programs available for you guys. And of course, our language studies where you heard me mention that um, if you want to focus on perfecting a foreign language, we have programs available, of course, in Mexico, Spain, France, Japan, and South Korea. In our field studies programs, typically we'll see a lot of our um, science majors, so our biology students will go over to the Bahamas, um, Ecuador, and Iceland. And it's not a program that's just available for our biology majors. Everyone has to fulfill a science course. Um, so whether you are an art major, um, you are a nursing major, or even um, an English major, you still have to fulfill those core classes. And what better way to do that than through a study abroad program um, going to the Bahamas? And of course, we have our service learning programs um, where our students are able to give back to communities to help build self-sustaining communities, um, whether that's focusing on ecotourism or that's focusing on building stoves to help um, reduce asthma-related illnesses for students in these villages and communities that don't have access to the equipment and services we have here in the States. So we talked a little bit about some of the signature programs we have, as well as what our faculty-led programs are. And I wanna to mention to you guys what's required in order for you to be eligible to participate in these short-term programs, as well as our semester in our academic year programs. As we mentioned early on, you are able to participate in our faculty-led programs, even if you are a freshman or a sophomore. So you don't have to have a minimum credit hour. You can come in first time attending college and you can participate in these faculty-led programs as long as you have a 2.0 GPA um, and you're in good academic standing. So like I said, if you're entering freshman, um, you maybe did dual enroll, maybe you didn't dual enroll and you're taking your first college classes. When you step on campus in the fall semester, you can still sign up for a program and participate in a faculty-led program. Again, these programs, faculty let our first faculty let programs of the school year typically start during spring break. So you'll be enrolled in that class for the spring semester and can begin. And um, if you want to wait a little bit later and participate in a program over the summer or May master, again, it's something you can uh, sign up for when classes start in August and you can apply for that program, prepare for it early on um, in order for it to take place in May master or over the summer. And then we have our semester and our academic year programs. If you like to study abroad for the full academic year, which I do encourage. Typically, these students will need to have at least a 2.75 GPA. For some of our programs, that is a 3.0 GPA. Um, and you want to have completed at least 40 to 45 credit hours already. This will put you close to your junior mark. And we ask that because at this time, um, it does require a bit more effort and responsibility on the student's part. So we wanna make sure you guys are prepared while you participate in these programs. Um, not only that, typically at this time, you're focusing on your major requirements. So we wanna make sure that you're able to succeed in a classroom while you're abroad. And because you are studying abroad at one of our host institutions, they are going to have their own additional requirements that you may have to fulfill. Um, typically, it is the same structure as it took for you to apply here to CSU. You completed an application, maybe had to submit your transcripts, um, maybe you had to submit just a few additional documents. And sometimes that is the case when doing semester programs. They may ask for your transcripts. Um, they may ask for you, of course, to complete their application um, as an exchange student or even as a direct enroll student. And then from there, um, you are accepted into the program. So pretty similar process. We work, work with you throughout the process. So definitely would intimidate you. It is one of the most rewarding experiences you could ever have. And um, again, I did mention to you all what faculty-led programs are, um, how they could be in 
embedded into the school year, into the semester, and of course over the summer. Just want to share with you some of the programs that we have available this academic year. So we have a group of students that will be going to Belize. I saw our culture and education in Belize program where they're able to work with students and teachers um, and learn more about the Belizean educational system. Um, we had a group of nursing students over the spring break who were over in Ireland to learn about the Irish healthcare system and the difference between the Irish healthcare system in rural Ireland, um, in Waterford, the difference between that and that of it in, um, in urban areas. So the difference between the healthcare system in Waterford to that of Dublin and comparing that against the healthcare system here in the United States. We have our summer program where our students go to Spain over the summer. They're able to get fully immersed into the culture based in Seville and stay with host families and really perfect their Spanish language skills. Our servant leadership students were able to go to Costa Rica and focus on ecotourism um, and give their service and their time to um, a small community there on the Osa Peninsula. So we have many opportunities available for you guys. They do change every year. Some of our programs um, are offered every year and others are offered maybe every other year on a rotation schedule. So. Some of the programs you see available now could be available next year or maybe be available the following school year. So continue to check to see what you can participate in this upcoming school year. And then I want to focus on some of our partners. We could not do what we do without the help of our partners. And this includes CIS Abroad. CIS Abroad is a third party provider which means they offer study abroad programs for students everywhere. Chances are if there is a program that you would like to take and we do not offer it here at CSU, they're going to offer it through CIS Abroad. They have a plethora of programs available based on major, based on location, um, based on program length. So you can choose your program just typing in those different fields to find something that is fit for you or that's ideal for you. Not only do they offer programs, um, education abroad through physical traveling where you're studying abroad, but they also have virtual exchanges um, where if you're not able to physically travel, whatever the reason, you can still participate in an education abroad program through a virtual experience. And of course they have internships and they're continuing to grow um, through Say Yes Abroad, We've had students study abroad in Thailand, um, study abroad in Rome, Italy, um, and they are also working on developing uh, programs for students who are interested in veterinary medicine. So those of you who are interested in veterinary medicine, um, do you know they are expanding? This is just one program example of how CS Abroad is constantly changing, revamping, um, and offering more program types for our students as our students' interests expand as well. Um, so, as I mentioned to you, if there's something you want to do that's not offered through CSU, um, I do highly encourage you all to check out CS Abroad. And I did say there's different program lengths, different program um, locations, and of course, varies based on major. But you can also choose, like I said, the length, um, how long you want to be abroad. And CS Abroad offers those amazing opportunities for you. Um, on this side note, they also offer scholarships available as well. We'll talk a little bit more about funding a little bit later, but I wanted to let you know that they also have their own funding that you can use in addition to what's available through CSU. So your opportunities are boundless. Um, we also have CSU, or not CSU, we also have USG Goes Global. This is a consortium where we work with other universities universities and the university system of Georgia um, where students are able to study abroad anywhere from about two to four weeks in length over the summer term. Um, the courses that are offered, they typically change every year. Um, for example, they have programs in Jamaica, Scotland, um, Ireland, England, um, Portugal, and the list goes on. With this particular program type, 
are students able to study abroad with students that are going to other USG institutions? So maybe you'll have a student um, in your class who is a student at Kennesaw or the University of North Georgia, and your professor could be someone who teaches from um, Badassa State. So that's that's where that consortium comes into place, and you're able to really expand your network um, and meet other students from throughout USG and, of course, other professors. And then again, some of our other partners we partner with um, outside of CAS Abroad and with the USG Goals Global Program is the SEPA Foundation. SEPA Foundation, we do a number of programs offered through SEPA, um, including the European Studies Center, which is based in Strasbourg, France. They offer fall and spring semester programs, as well as the summer leadership program um, every year where our students can study abroad. Um, they're able to earn hours towards internships, towards their majors, um, and also they offer virtual exchange programs. So since COVID, I'll talk about this a little bit more, um, virtual program has been around for a while, but we are offering a lot more options for students who may not be able to travel physically while abroad. And much like say as abroad, SEPA also has scholarships available that students can use in conjunction with CSU funding as well. And then Anglo Educational Services. AES is a program provider we work with that is based in London, and they offer internships for students in all majors. So if you're looking to maybe your communications major and you want to focus on film production, maybe you are a kinesiology major and you want to focus on physical therapy, they have programs or options available for you where you get placed with a company based in London and you can fulfill your internship requirements there. So do highly recommend this program. We have this that's offered over the summer for Anglo Educational Services, as well as the fall and spring semesters for you all as well. So these are just some of the options we have available that we partner with here at CSU. And then I did mention earlier that we have an entire section here dedicated to CSU and Oxford. We do have our Oxford Visiting Student Program, and it's our OSVP program, our most competitive program that we have available and most rewarding, where our students are able to study abroad at the University of Oxford, the third largest higher education institution in the world. Um, and we partner with three colleges over in Oxford to include Regents Park College, St. Anne's College, and St. Catharines or St. Cat's College, where our students are able to study abroad. Um, you do want to make sure you have at least a 3.75 GPA, which is why it is our most competitive program, um, because you are studying, again, at the University of Oxford. Um, ideal program for students that are looking to go to graduate school, maybe do independent research, um, or to continue their studies and just to learn more about maybe their their field or their major more on a one-on-one -on -one setting outside of the lecture um, structure that we have available here. While students are studying abroad in Oxford, they also have the opportunity to stay at CSU's very own Spencer House. Many of you may have heard of this and some of you probably haven't, um, but CSU has a home based in Oxford, England, where our students are able to live while they are studying abroad. We are one of only two USG institutions or in the state of Georgia that have a home over in Oxford, England. UGA is the other, I think our home looks better. Um, but our students are able to stay there during their time while studying abroad, are able to have their own room, able to cook, clean, go grocery shopping as if they're living here, but it is their home away from home while they're studying abroad. Then you think about the University of Oxford or our Oxford Visiting Student Program is different in the regards that, again, it's our most competitive, one of our most rewarding, uh, but also your classes are set up as a tutorial system. So at CSU, you'll become familiar with our lecture style classrooms where your professor is teaching or lecturing in front of a group of students. 
that isn't the case with our OSVP program. You're going to have a tutor who is your professor, but they are called your tutor because you're having what's called tutorials instead of classes. So the language is a little different there in that regards, but you're going to meet with your tutor or your professor one on one to receive your instruction. So it's really, really structured to make sure the student thrives and they have all the resources and access to the help they need while they are abroad. So definitely recommend this program for students who are interested in our humanities. Um, not only that, even like our math majors. Um, so definitely reach out to us if this is a program you're interested in pursuing. Um, highly rewarding and highly recommend. I do want to talk a bit more about our semester programs or our academic year programs. I mentioned previously that we have the Oxford Business Student Program where we just talked about, but also we have one of our newer partners, Oxford Brooks University, that is also based in Oxford, England. And this is an exchange program. It is similar in that regards to the Oxford Business Student Program where students can pay CSU tuition and fees to study abroad. For those that may not want to choose the Oxford Visiting Student Program, they have the option to do Oxford Brooks University and still, of course, stay in the Spencer House during their time studying abroad in Oxford, England. This school is like the CSU of England or the CSU of Oxford. Um, you will meet many international students from around the world, as well as students that are based in Lincoln, England, sorry. You'll also be able to meet your professors and have similar to CSU lecture style classes. Um, but this is an experience unlike any other, much like our Oxford Disney student program. And it touched base on our other semester exchange partners we had. We have um, several programs available in England you're able to participate in, as well as Germany, Ireland, Japan, South Korea, and Spain. With our exchange partners, um, as I touched on, you're going to pay CSU tuition and fee rates to study abroad. So you're not going to pay what the tuition cost would be for a student, for example, that is studying at Hillbrown University or that is studying at Constant Guy University. You're going to pay what you would pay here at CSU. And oftentimes, housing at these schools um, is a lot more affordable uh, or a lot more cost effective than um, the resident or res life costs here at CSU. So the rewards are balanced to participate in these exchange programs where not only do we send our students abroad, but these schools send students here to us at CSU um, where you're able to meet international students to learn more about what their school is like. So we encourage you all to consider these exchange programs. And then we have our direct enroll partners. The difference between the two with our direct enroll partners and our exchange partners, students pay a flat fee to participate in our direct enroll programs. Um, and we'll break that cost structure down a little bit more when we get to the payment page. But with our direct enroll partners, students are still able to participate and study abroad like they would with our semester exchange programs. Um, and oftentimes when participating, for example, in a program with Anglo um, London Internship or the University of Waikato and Hamilton, New Zealand, um, you get a little bit more room to choose different classes um, compared to with our semester program. So you're sometimes able to choose a little bit more classes or a little bit more courses are available to you through our direct enrolls. They will be available to you during our exchange programs, but they are both amazing experiences that you're able to participate in. And in virtual study abroad. So what is virtual study abroad? Um, we are in a day and age where Many people know what virtual learning is now. <laughs> um, it has been around for at least the past two decades, but again, um, since 2020 has definitely become um, a lot more used, um, a lot more programming has become available virtually for students for, again, various reasons. So what is virtual study abroad? 
and as technology enabled dialogues and collaboration between people over a sustained period of time. It is facilitated by professors or trained facilitators. Um, what it is not digital pen pals um, or study abroad wise. That's something you could take lightly um, or think you can kind of pass by. It isn't as moderated, it's not structured. Um, so it is very much like taking a class here at CSU. However, because it's virtual, you will have maybe classmates or other students that are in your group that may not be from the United States, that may be from Brazil, that may be from Botswana, that may be from um, Ghana, that could be from Japan. And English may not be their first language, but they will speak English and you guys will get different perspectives um, on maybe the projects or assignments that are assigned to you and you have to overcome those um, and have discussions with them. Your professors, um, their native language may not be English, but they do speak English. So you may have the accents like you're going to have in person when you're physically abroad. Um, you're still going to have cross-cultural um, opportunity or cross-cultural communication opportunities to meet and interact with other people from around the world. Um, and you do receive, like you would with regular or physical study abroad, you do receive a grade towards your experiences. Um, we have programming available for you guys, not only through study abroad, virtual study abroad, but also virtual internship opportunities as well, where you can fulfill your internship requirements and you could have a project manager or maybe a CEO um, or a department um, lead that you will work with to complete a case study or to help solve a real world problem towards um, an issue that's going on. So program costs we're gonna talk about. The difference between faculty-led programs and our semester or academic year programs with our faculty-led programs, what's included in a cost is airfare, your housing, required excursions you guys will participate in, um, most of your meals, and of course, your health insurance that everyone's required to have. All of this is included in your program costs, and this is what the CGE will take care of for you and arrange for you. What's not included in your faculty-led programs um, are your course tuition and fees, Transportation to and from the airport, as if we're doing a summer program, some students may go back home um, and meet up at the airport, while others may stay on campus and just meet up that way. Um, and then personal expenses, you're going to have some money for souvenirs you may want to do, um, or just for toiletry items. So those are not including your program costs that you will take care of yourself. And of course, to cancel for any reason assurance. This is something that's not required, it's not required. Um, it has been around for a while, but it's to kind of give students an extra layer of protection if they want it towards their program costs. Um, it's not something um, I'm really recommending more, but it's like to make it available for you as an option if you would like to purchase it. And then with our semester exchange and direct enroll programs, the difference in the cost. With our exchange programs, you're going to have your CSU tuition and fees paid for. Um, if you have hope, if you have sell, um, this covers your tuition and fees. And again, regardless of where you're studying abroad, you're going to pay the same rate at your host school as you pay at CSU. And of course, your application fee will be included. For our semester and academic year programs, application fee is just $200, and it lets us know that you're committed to moving forward with the program. And then with the direct and real programs, I did tell you get a little bit more flexibility with this. Um, these programs have what's called a flat fee. So you just pay that flat fee, which is your tuition, um, as well as your room and board, and typically all that is grouped together. Um, this rate can be higher than CSU rates, but I can't tell you all the exact cost of each program, as each program's cost does vary differently when it comes to direct and real programs. So um, for me to give you a ballpark um, would not be fair as each school has different costs. It's something we could examine and look more at when we have our individual advising sessions. Um, and then housing and airfare. 
with our semester and our academic year programs. This is something that the student will do um, on their own that they will be responsible for. Um, so you'll secure your housing if you're studying abroad for a semester with your host school. You'll connect with them, they'll reach out to you to see you know, if you basically want to live in the equivalent of Clearview Hall, if you want to bring with other international students, or if you want to bring with domestic students, you'll you'll work with your host school to make those arrangements and of course secure your airfare. So we're still going to talk about paying for study abroad. We kind of gave um, a breakdown of what costs are included and not included based on your program type. But now we want to focus on how can you help fund your study abroad experience and what's available to you as a CSU student. We do offer what's called CSU or the uh, CGE grants for study abroad. Um, amounts vary based on your program's length. So um, the longer you're abroad, the more you're awarded. Um, they are awarded on a first come, first serve basis. So 8 a.m. every application cycle that's open, students are able to apply for these awards um, and receive them towards their study abroad experience. And then we have the study abroad scholarships, as well as other CSU scholarships. These are merit based um, as long as students have a 2.75 GPA, they can apply for the CSU study abroad scholarship. And again, these amounts vary, um, with it being very based and competitive, students can receive up to $2,000. It does require one essay, so a statement of purpose and need, and a faculty recommendation um, for the student. There are also departmental scholarships students can apply for. Perhaps a student is an English major and they're studying abroad. Not only can they apply for the study abroad scholarship, they can also apply for scholarships offered through the Department of English, or maybe they are wanting to focus on a foreign language and they can apply for not only the CSU study abroad scholarship, but also apply for a scholarship offered through the Department of Modern and Classical Languages um, and so forth. So a lot of departments also have their own department mental scholarships students can apply for as well. So we do encourage students to look into these resources that are available for them based on a major in which departments they are housed in. And then there are non CSU scholarships students can apply for and our students have been awarded. I am so um, excited to share that we've had um, two born recipients and um, these are scholarships where students are able to apply for, for example, the Gilman, Gilman McCain for students that are Pell Grant recipients can be awarded up to $5,000 in scholarship costs. Um, for the Gilman McCain, students that are dependents of active duty military can apply for these scholarships and of course receive $5,000, up to $5,000 like they would for the Gilman scholarship. For the born scholarship, um, this one is for critical need languages. So if a student is looking to study a uh, potential language that is um, spoken in a homogenous country that is near extension. Um, so we're not looking at Spanish, we're not looking at German, we're not looking at English, of course, um, but maybe a student is looking to study um, Arabic. Maybe the student is looking to study Japanese. Um, they are able to apply for the born scholarship and in return um, give back to the born scholarship um, at least a year of service and born scholarship is focused on national security. So a student would be interested in a career field in national security. Um, it would be ideal for them to apply for the born scholarship to be used towards studying abroad. Um, like the born, the Gilman also offers a scholarship opportunity for students to apply for it. It is called the um, Critical Need Language Award. So in addition to a student applying for Gilman, they can apply for the Critical Need Language Award where they can receive an additional $3,000 for a potential $8,000 scholarship. And they can apply for the born where they can receive up to $25,000 towards their scholarship costs. Um, so um, like I said, I am grateful to say that we've had students be awarded both the Gilman and the Boren. 
and the Fund for Education Abroad Scholarship, where our students are able to apply for scholarships um, based on different identities. Um, and it's kind of a pool of scholarships that you can pull from and apply for that way, as well as Freeman Asia, where our students are able to apply for a scholarship if they are studying abroad in an Asian country and can go towards their program costs as well. So we've had recipients of all of these scholarships, um, and it's always um, exciting to learn when one of your students have been awarded. And then there's the federal or uh, the state financial aid that our students can use through their study abroad program. So um, I've said a few times throughout this here where if someone has hope or if they have Zell Miller, oftentimes that can cover their tuition costs. If they are receiving Pell Grant, this also can help towards their program costs. So as long as the student is taking classes that fulfill their degree requirement, they're able to use their financial aid package um, if eligible to apply towards their study abroad costs. And then I just want to share some next steps with you as we get close to wrapping up. Um, we shared a lot of information and it can be overwhelming. So to kind of help break it down and to share with you what you can expect, what the process is like, um, first you just want to go online, check out to see what programs we have available, Every program that is running for the upcoming year will become available in the fall when classes start uh, in August. And then you kind of narrow down to see what you're interested in. You will want to schedule an advice and appointment, not only with your academic advisor, but also with um, us here in the Center for Global Engagement so we can help make sure you are choosing a program that is ideal for you. And let your family and friends know you're interested in studying abroad. They can be um, a great support system for you. Um, and who knows, can even help maybe support you financially towards your study abroad experience or programs. And then you want to sign up for your program. With our faculty led programs, um, those are really popular. So you definitely want to express interest early on when a program becomes available that you're interested in. Um, and of course, pay your deposit to um, secure your acceptance into your program. And once you've done that, you want to start looking at funding opportunities available. So what grants can you apply for? What scholarships you can apply for? Um, and this is the process of um, picking a program that is available to you, that's right for you, that you may be interested in. Just to kind of break it down um, and to make it easier for you, because again, this was a lot of information to take in. So when you go to our website, this is what you can expect to see. This is what our homepage looks like. And it shows you how you can search for programs. You can click on programs. You can click on program discovery and maybe choose maybe a major interested in a location and you can pull up different programs for you this way. This is just an example of what an online brochure looks like. It gives you an overview of the program, um, where you can apply because this program application did just recently close. You're not able to click the apply now button, but one would typically be available just above the request info um, button and it lets you know what the program is like, what class or classes you could take when the program um, program dates are and what that payment schedule looks like. So it just gives you um, all the information you can look for when looking at programs that we have available. And then we also encourage you all to check out our student experiences abroad. They give you just a glimpse into what their programs were like where you're either reading their blogs, looking at their photo journals, or maybe looking at their videos to learn more about what the experience was like from a student just like you. And then I just wanna share some um, statistics with you guys while we're here. So do you know there's no better time to go abroad than while you're in college. It will never be as affordable. Um, it will never be maybe not as logistically easy to study abroad or to go abroad while you are in college. Um, through studying abroad, you're able to develop skills that your future employers are gonna be looking for um, to help you not only land a job after graduation, but maybe land a job before you even graduate. Um, you're able to not only gain a better perspective of yourself, but you learn more about other cultures. Um, you gain a deeper appreciation of other cultures as well as your own and a deeper respect for other cultures as well as your own culture. 
Maybe you've been looking to study a foreign language and you want to perfect that. There is no better time to do that than during your college career, studying abroad in a country where you're able to learn a foreign language and use it on a daily basis. Um, and we also have what is called the International Study Certificate. I will talk a bit more about moving forward where you can add this onto your degree. If you're interested in learning more um, about international education, or maybe you have an interest in a particular area, a particular region, or maybe a um, particular time period in another country, um, it's a great idea to add the International Study Certificate for that. Students who study abroad, um, you graduate a lot faster than students um, who typically don't. Um, you're a bit more motivated to finish your classes, um, to stay on track. Um, and oftentimes, um, the time can come if you guys are doing semester programs. Sometimes you can fulfill your degree requirements a little bit earlier. So there are a number of benefits um, to studying abroad and advantages that you have available to you to pursue not only study abroad, but our virtual programming and our service learning programs available as well. So, and then this here is just um, a short um, result or survey from our 2010 and 2011 cohort. So these numbers are a little bit older. Um, however, the, the data is still the same. Students graduate sooner, um, they have higher degrees, um, and they earn their um, credits a lot faster than students who do not study abroad or do not participate in virtual learning programming. And then the International Studies Certificate I wanted to touch on for you. Um, this is a great interdisciplinary program that students can add to their degree. So regardless of your major or your minor, you can definitely integrate the ISCM into your degree plan. It is only 15 credit hours and oftentimes can be taken in conjunction with your major requirements or your minor requirements. And it includes study abroad. So you wanna make sure you are either doing a study abroad program or you are participating in a virtual study abroad program. Um, and it positions you guys to be able to compete in a global economy. Um, it gives you that competitive edge and advantage that your peers who do not study abroad um, do not have, that you will be able to have that, have greater problem solving skills, to be able to cope with ambiguity a little bit better, um, as well as have stronger communication skills. So this is something you can definitely add to your degree as a freshman or a sophomore, um, even your junior year, um, and we can help you all fulfill this requirement. So reach out if this is something you are interested in adding to your degree requirement. And then I'll leave you with this. If you all would like more information, definitely reach out to us. We are located um, in the Schuster Center for Student Success. Follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook to see what we're up to and to hear more about other student stories and experiences abroad. So thank you. I look forward to meeting you all um, as you enter campus here at CSU and welcome aboard.